My name is Mark Gerdish. I'm Chief of Cardiothoracic Surgery at Franciscan Health in Indianapolis, Indiana. Several years ago, we started a very aggressive program of patient recovery that expedited getting out of the hospital, getting back to your life, being fully active. Our staff enjoys it, nursing staff, respiratory therapy, physical therapy, everybody does, because they all contribute to it. We get to see how it influences the patient from before surgery all the way through their complete recovery. We watch that time getting condensed, the experience getting better. Patients are, they're very vocal about it, that they, you know, that they can't believe that they've gotten to this stage so quickly. Hi, Mr. Rodenbaum, how are you feeling? Feeling great. So we're post-operative day number three after surgery, and um, have you had any pain? No. So even right after surgery, you weren't hurting, weren't having any pain? I have not had the first amount of pain at all. During the last five years, uh, the heart surgery recovery process has changed a great deal. Several years ago, we initiated a very aggressive program for rapid recovery. It was really born out of first recognizing that the folks for whom we did minimally invasive surgery were feeling well and mostly pain-free and getting out of the hospital really quickly. And we wanted it to be the same for the people for whom we did sternotomy. We just wanted them to have the same experience. And so the first thing we did, that foundational building block, was to move toward everyone having rigid plate fixation of the sternum. So everybody has an orthopedic repair of the bone, the divided bone, so that we kind of take the bone out of the equation. Recognizing that we could give them their mobility, we also saw their uh, pain go way down to the point where we reduced the use of opioids by 96%. Dramatic pain reduction, so how do we optimize the experience for the patient, recognizing that they're no longer burdened by the use of opioids? And what happened then was we started to diminish the amount of medication that was used in the operating room so that people could get extubated in the operating room. So more and more patients come out of the operating room, no matter what the approach is, already off the ventilator. Next day, up in the morning, nobody gets back in bed all day, they're up walking. And all of that is achieved, not only because we've done rigid sternal fixation and because we've decreased the need for those medications, but we take this very global approach first to pain, which includes when the patient comes into the operating room, everybody gets an erector spinae block. So the anesthesiologist takes them 10 minutes, they put some medicine in your back, and it gives you this kind of general sense of comfort for the musculoskeletal system of the chest. Then they get the rigid sternal fixation, then they get minimal opioids, they get off the ventilator quickly, and they're moving because we let them use their arms. And what we've gone to now is almost no restrictions. So day after surgery, up to 15 pounds in each arm. And basically over the next few weeks, we let you get up to 20 pounds in each arm. The other thing that we recognized was that with that mobility and the lack of need of those medications, that once they leave the hospital, they should be able to drive. So what we did was, first we said, at 10 days, then we said at a week, and now we're at five days. So five days after you leave the hospital, you can drive. If you're not taking any pain medicine and you're not having a visiting home nurse, you can drive when you leave the hospital. This kind of gets into this kind of global perspective of how do we optimize everything so that everybody kind of gets that experience. So then we backed up and we backed up to when we first meet the patient and we started to become very rigorous about uh, anemia protocols, making sure that somebody's hemoglobin was normal when they had heart surgery. You can do it. We have great uh, team of uh, hematologists who participate with us, who in the preparation for the patient make sure that the hemoglobin is normal. So we get rid of the transfusion. Stopping smoking, smoking cessation, we work with them ahead of time for that. Prehab, we, do a pro we have a process where if somebody, and this, there's data on this, has been published, that if someone is deconditioned before going into the surgery, then we try to get them rehab, which really is prehab, before they go into the hospital. So we have an exercise protocol. So if, they, if we don't have a means to actually engage them with a rehab professional, we give them exercise protocols to do at home, and they do them. Uh, we also give them resistive breathing devices so they can work on the strength of breathing coming in. That's good for people who are weak. It's also really good for people who are strong. So they come in, people come in kind of energized, their, their musculature is ready for everything that they need to do. 
Um, and then nutrition. So we address nutrition up front as well. People are front end loaded with the amino acids and things that they need to heal well. And then we carb load them right before surgery. So people hear of carb loading for running a marathon. You're about to run a marathon, you're having heart surgery. So we carb load them coming in. This of course means then we have to tighten up their glucose control around the time of surgery, which we always do. And we, it's super effective because it starts with anesthesia and moves on to the floor with the nurses and with our endocrinologists. We have endocrinologists that see every patient even if you don't have a history of diabetes, because we want to control those blood sugars, because we want to optimize your metabolizing the blood sugar, how you're using the nutrients in your body. The respiratory therapists are going to be working with your breathing. We get them energized about that. They come to the hospital ready. With all of that, we've kind of shortened the post-op after you leave recovery process now. So people are driving, they're going to the store, they're going to church, they're going to see their friends, they're spending time with their families under, in a normal fashion. Being able to operate on somebody and have them, even with a sternotomy, let alone minimally invasive, and have them be able to go to their daughter's wedding a week later, that's a really beautiful thing. And we've been able to achieve that. Now, a little bit you're thinking there, well, that's kind of like the more healthy folks having heart surgery. So let's look at the little bit more challenging. And this becomes super important because now we're talking about grandpa and grandma. Uh, we're talking about folks who have multiple comorbidities that have issues that limit them in their life. And we have found that applying these same principles has dramatically improved their recovery as well. The way we measured that was we looked at before we started this, so looking back in like 2015, and then we looked at 2017, 19, 21, and what we see is that we've had a steady decrease in the patients that go to extended care facilities. This, I think, is our greatest badge of honor because people don't want to go to those places. They, the extended care facilities are wonderful places, wonderful people staffing them, working for those patients, taking care of them, doing their rehab. People want to go home. So we've gone from 30% of patients, again, a complex patient population, going to some type of extended care facility, discharged to some type of rehab, down to less than 10%. Think of that in terms of days at home. That's what we're after. So then we looked at, so somebody said to me, well, you must be having a lot of readmissions then because you're sending people home. So we looked at it. And as it turns out, our 30-day readmission is single digits. So anything below 10% for 30-day re readmission is good. And we hover right around six or 7%. What we've achieved over the last several years really is a convergence between our minimally invasive surgery patients and our open chest surgery patients so that the experience is very, very similar. So whether they're having a little incision or a full incision, the experience is very close to the same with rapid recovery and restoration of full activity. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.